Welcome back to another episode of Please Say More with your host, Apollo P. And I'm in the studio with a very special guest. Uh, he likes, I, he, okay, so I gave this man his first interview. Right. On the record. First interview. First on interview. record. There we go. And the last interview, bro. There we, <laughs> first and the last so far. There we go. Yeah. And this man, he's known in the wave community. If you know about 360 Waves, you know about this man. Right. You know, he's also transitioned from YouTube, <laughs> and he's doing a lot of wavy merch. You know what I mean? Right, shout out to wavy, wavy merch. Wavy movement. And I should have brought you a do-rag, bro. Oh, man, I would appreciate that. I, I should have brought one. I actually bought a do-rag. Oh, you got them? Yes, I did. Okay, I yes, appreciate I that, bro. Yeah. That's love, bro. That's yeah. love. That's love. I was like, when, you do, when the first time you launched, you got yeah. the do-rags, I got the, the pink one, and I got the gold one. The, the velvet, the, the velvet, the velvet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, all right, so let me. I'm, I'm keep on saying a lot, but all right. So let me introduce the man himself. We got Nick Wavy in the what's studio. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? And this is a really good brother, man. Appreciate you, Apollo. For the people, I support this guy. Yeah. I support you, bro. I want to see you make it, bro. I appreciate that yeah. a lot. I appreciate that a lot, and I like to support you too. I appreciate that, yeah. bro. I pre- it's love, bro. Yeah. It's love. That's love. Because you know what the thing was when I first found out about you, mm-hmm. I did not know you were from like Canada Toronto. or Toronto. Yeah. I didn't know. I just saw you were doing waves, and I'm like, okay, this guy is cool. Because yeah. at the time, some of your videos were in Bahamas. So I'm like, Barbados, 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 Barbados. Barbados, Barbados, Barbados. Barbados. Right, no Everybody does that, though. Everybody <laughs> makes that mistake. <laughs> yeah. It's Barbados. No disrespect. Right. <laughs> That's the same country uh, Ren is from, right? Barbados. Yeah, yeah. All right. Right, right, right. Man, all right. Yeah. So when I saw those, I was like, oh, okay, he's, I thought he was an international dude. I thought you were an international dude. Yeah. And then I'm seeing you using some of the terminology in your video. <laughs> you're the accent, yeah, yeah. you know, like, some words. I'm like, this guy is kind of confusing me. Yeah. <laughs> I reached out to you, and then I was like, we made that connection. Yeah. And we got that first one, which you could find on YouTube. But right. we we're trying to do this again, but in a little different capacity. Because uh, with this whole series, Please Say More, it's not more so just me about interviewing you as like a person, but it's me to kind of see how you went into your purpose, your right. career, and how that affects uh, you and other aspects of your life. Yeah. So... I guess let's start off from the beginning in terms of like career. So, and when you were growing up, what did you really want to be? Um, honestly, I think when I hit puberty, I got tall. So I was like five. In grade nine, I was five four, yeah. and I grew six inches that summer. So I'm five ten now. So yeah. I'm like, yo, I want to go to the NBA. Yeah. And I went to a, a more of a nerdy school, so it wasn't really a sports school. So I want to be an athlete. Yeah. And um, that just didn't work out for me. So I had to figure out what I wanted to do next. I've always been a hustler. I've always been interested in you know making money, and. I just consider myself a businessman, yeah. pretty much. So yeah, my career—I want to be an NBA player, bro. Want to be an NBA, NBA player? NBA, one of the ball, one of the hoop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in terms of your lifestyle and your life, mm-hmm. how did that transition into you? Uh, I guess get into the world of the internet business and uh, I guess YouTube more so. So how that started was. Um, there was a so my haircut back in the day. Yeah. I think it was grade ten when I first got my real haircut. So I used to go to my mom's salon. It mm-hmm. wasn't even a barbershop. So she used to give me like a one all over. And then at the top, she would leave like a flip. So I have like some weird haircut. I'm in high school. My boys are roasting me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, what, what, what am I supposed to ask the barber? Yeah. And I Googled up um, black men's hairstyle. And I had dandruff at the time too. So I, I needed to find something. Damn. Yeah, it was bad. Like I'll scratch my head. I'm like, yo, I can't even like my, I, it was a uniform school. Yeah. It was a blue uniform. So if I scratch my head, there's dandruff on the my blue, shirt. You have the blue golf shirt? I think it's my school blue had a blue. Shirt. Yeah, 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 we had my, blue and white. Yeah, I had blue. Yeah. We had, okay, we had white and we had, um, when I first started in mm-hmm. tech school, we had white uh, golf shirt with the blue vest. Yeah. And they got rid of Oh, the, you had the vest. Yeah. Oh, they shoot. got us preppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got <laughs> rid of the vest and they, they, they brought in the blue golf shirt. Now yeah. it's Oh yeah. man, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was that. That was that issue. So yeah. I had to find a way to, you know, get a new hairstyle look uh, presentable for yeah. my age at the time. And I seen waves, and I started brushing my hair. And then there was a competition where this company would give you a hundred dollars mm-hmm. and all their products. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I want to win that. And I thought at the time, because no one at the time had waves in the city. Like I was, well, people probably had waves, but I was that one guy that was serious about it. Yeah. You know, so I entered this competition. I thought I was, I was the man, and then I lost. And I kept losing month after month. It took me like six months of trying to win the one hundred dollars yeah. and all the products and just the title of Wave King. Yeah. And then I eventually won it. And then during that process to win that title, you have to make videos and yeah. teach people about how to get the waves and stuff. And that's kind of how I started making the content. Mm-hmm. And then it got bigger and bigger to the point where I'm like, yo, I have. I started out with zero, and then yeah. my boy was my first subscriber. Shout out to my boy Andy. And then I hit a hundred, and then I hit a thousand. I'm just like, this is kind of crazy because I remember I had zero, mm-hmm. you know. And then that taste of growth allowed me and motivated me to keep going and keep trying to get more and more. So yeah, that's how I, I started the YouTube. That, that's how I got into YouTube. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, so once you, once you see your, you are officially a YouTuber and you're making mm-hmm. money off of making videos, you know, at that point, did you feel like that you were going to do this long term? 
that's a good question. I feel like when you're young, you don't even know what you're really doing. You yeah. know, so at the time, I think I was 17 when I started YouTube. And at that point, I don't know what I really want to do. My parents are still telling me do school. Yeah. You know, I know I don't want to go to school. Like it was my school was a pretty um, it was a smart school, you could yeah. say. So all my friends were going to university, college, and then I kind of stayed back yeah. and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just did what I loved. Yeah. And for a long time, YouTube wasn't paying me. So I had no money, no job. And I, I said, yo, I have a thousand subscribers. Yeah. I'm too famous to work a job. <laughs> you know, I can't be working. You know, I was looking at Costco at the time. Like, yo, I can't do this, you yeah. know? So I had no money, no job. And I was just yeah. doing what I loved, you know? Exactly. And that allowed me to build from the bottom day yeah. by day, piece by piece. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, after I did like a Ram Riddle interview, I was working at Ikea. Yeah. And then I was doing, I was a cashier at Ikea. And I was like the self checkout line, yeah. just, you know, monitoring everything. Yeah, yeah. And then some kids, some white boys came up to me. I was like, "Yo, yo, you're the dude that did the <laughs> Ram Riddles interview." And I'm like, "Fuck." That's bro. how you know you made it, bro. Yeah, yeah, you got to quit after that. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Bro, <laughs> you can't do me like that, man." Yeah. I, was like, I told him, "Shh," because <laughs> think about it, man. I, I just that video was going viral at the time. Yeah. Like, it was on like uh, Word on Road. I, I watched like, it. Yeah, I yeah. watched it. Yeah. And I'm like, "Fuck." And it, the the ad revenue was coming. This was on YouTube, like at 100 subscribers. Yeah. Your partner. Yeah. yeah. And the ad revenue wasn't really hitting like that for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, this is this is tough. I'm still working out <laughs> here. Like, guys are seeing me. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. So, all right. So, you're you're making, you got a thousand subscribers on YouTube. You got, your, your videos are doing some numbers. And you start to build up on the platform. And you turn into, like, one of the top three waivers on the right. platform. Right. You know, Nick Wave. You talking about waves back in, like, what? let's see, 20, 2013? 20, 2012, 2011. Yeah. Nick Wavy, yeah, 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 big guy. Yeah, you got the waves because when you think, because think about it. At the time, you were one of the very few, yeah, uh, people on there. Yeah, and when you you would search uh, waves and you come with you, uh, three sixty Jeezy, yeah, Sir Cruz, right, yeah, pretty much. And that was the thing. Even in Toronto, like everyone thought I was American at the time. Yeah. So there's brushes that I was selling back in the day that yeah. you couldn't get in. Um, that you couldn't get in. Canada, yeah. so I actually had these, and then all these people I posted them up on YouTube, yeah. and then all these Toronto waivers like, "Yo, Nick, I didn't know you're from Toronto. Yo, let's link up, sell me the brushes." So, yeah. that I feel like people who have waves, they're very passionate about it. So if you see a man that has waves, yeah. yo, he's passionate about it, and I feel like I was one of the first people that made it okay to be open about yeah. being passionate about it. You know, like it'd be weird to brush your hair in public. It'd be weird. You don't want to tell people that you're brushing your hair for two hours at, in your crib, yeah. you know, but I kind of feel like I was the voice that said, yo, you can let people know like waves are sick, you know? And then a lot of people, I think that's why a lot of people respect me. Cause I was doing this from time. Yeah. You got, yeah. You, you put in the work, from you time, 10, yeah. hours and stuff like that. Probably more, bro. <laughs> Probably more, bro. When I first was introduced to Waves, I was in high school still. Yeah, yeah I was like, we're in the same time you got into it because you had the, the dangerous problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was doing the same thing, but I didn't, I didn't, my mom didn't let me have a do-rag because she thought it was thuggers at the time. Right. And, you know, 50 Cent was booming. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No rags of, allowed. Yeah, no yeah so it was tough. So I was really one of the, the waivers that were... I was waving it inside a little bit inside school and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes girls were like, let me brush your hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It'd be like that. Yeah. And then I would, you know, brush inside the shower and then brush while I'm at home. But I'm sleeping mm -hmm. barehead. No do right. Yeah, so I'm struggling. Taking steps back, bro. Yeah. You're work, putting in the work, but you're not saving the progress, struggling. bro. Struggling. Yeah. Did, I didn't get better at my waves. Well, my waves are still kind of throwing me off because I might mm -hmm. grow my hair for like a... You know, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm not. Switch, you're switching up, bro. You're yeah. switching up. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned to get better at my with the waves when I got the do rag when I got a little older. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, all right, cool. This, I'm getting it in. I'm getting it in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So YouTube, crazy numbers. Uh, and then all right. So at, at any particular point doing YouTube, did you go like, I want to stop? Like did many you, times. Okay. Yo, many Let's times. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it one time. Uh, yo, it's it's for me. Um, it kind of leads to a mental issue. You mm -hmm. know, so. I was really passionate about YouTube. So if I, I'm doing videos in my prime, I would say I'm dropping a video, I'm getting 20K views in a night and I'm dropping videos every single day. So if my numbers don't reach a certain you know, threshold, yeah. I'm like, what did I do wrong? What can I do to fix it? Am I falling off? Is my time done? Yeah. You know, and going on that roller coaster, mm -hmm. and that's just as an entrepreneur as well, the roller coaster of emotions yeah. can take a toll on you mentally. So yeah. there's times I'm like, yo, I just can't do this no more. I feel like I'm falling off. And then boom, our next video is going viral. And now I'm going off the viral hype and yeah. now I'm, I'm rolling out videos and everything is booming. Yeah. And then it slowly dies off. I'm like, yo, I think my time is done. <laughs> you know? and, then it, and it's just a repeat process. Yeah. You know, I just, I guess that just shows you have to stick with the grind. You know, yeah. it's going to be ups, it's going to be downs, but that's just part of the game. Yeah. And also many times I wanted to quit. Yeah. So I, I yo, I also, the YouTube burnout is a real thing. Have you, real. How, have you got YouTube burnout? 
Many times, many times. Many times. I think I'm going through one right now. Okay. Like in 2019, I uploaded probably like five or six videos. And yeah. when I met you in 2018, bro, I was on the grind to 100K. So I'm yeah. uploading videos every day. I'm live streaming every night from like midnight to four mm -hmm. in the morning. I'm doing that every day, yeah. you know? So 2019, when I only dropped five or six videos, it was, I realized I didn't know what I wanted to make, what content I wanted to make yeah. moving forward because I was growing as a person. Yeah. And I just was lost. And then I realized that I don't want to put this pressure on me anymore. You know, yeah. this is just a phase in my life where I cannot create content. Like, yeah. I don't know what to do yet. And then that taught me that I have to branch off into other things. And I always had this mentality, like, online, I don't really always want to be here. Yeah. You know, I put my hours in from for over a decade online, yeah. you know. So I'm at a stage now where I want to be able to make money offline. And then if there's still that online aspect, that's cool. You know, but I want to be able to thrive offline as well. So... If I'm YouTube burnt out, mm -hmm. I'm still making bread wherever else, you know. So, so how many? What, what was the steps like to make that transition? Because I know that you you went through YouTube burnouts. You went through like things that you felt you weren't going to be here long enough. So I'm pretty sure the, how many ups and downs did you have to really enjoy to go like, you know what? This is the last up. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna scare myself and stress myself. Yeah, to see if I'm it's not, not done, bro. Oh, it's never done. It's bro. never done. It's never gonna be done. Right okay. now, I'm just. I'm just. I'm down yeah. for now. Like I've been recently thinking about it. Like. I need to get back, you yeah. know? So I'm just at a stage where I need to figure out who wants to be a part of my empire, yeah. you know, and let's go, yeah. you know? I could, I could do it by myself, yeah. you know, but it's more fun when there's other people, yeah. you know? I feel you, I feel you, because you built up something. Yeah. You built up something, and I saw, I was kind of I was kind of taken back when you kind of said you were doing YouTube, you are selling your channel. Yeah. Channel. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind yeah. of a lot, but this is content right here. Exactly, yeah, it's exactly. Content. There's times, bro, where I realized that I wanted to step away from YouTube. Yeah. There was a time I went to SCC, Scarborough Town Center. Yeah. And, bro, I'm vlogging in the middle of the mall. I go to Yorkdale. Yeah. I'm with a shorty. I'm vlogging in the yeah. middle of the mall. And I it got to a point where I'm like, there's, I can't believe I did that. Like, yeah. how how <laughs> was I doing that? And I'm just like, I, that made me realize I changed. Yeah. You know, that made me realize, like, I can't do what I used to do because I'm not that same person. Exactly. You know what I mean? So matured. that's... Yeah, I matured, yeah. bro. All right, so let's talk about you. The maturity the maturity within the YouTube phase. Most mm -hmm. people, when they mature, their content changes. But you, yeah. you want to, you know, exodus the platform altogether. So right. uh, I know that we were talking about the wavy merch and stuff like that. And also, as well as the barber, the barbershop, which came yeah. a little later. Yeah. But let's talk about that transition and you, you diversifying yourself as a, a businessman and going mm -hmm. into the wavy merch. Like, what, what, like, talk about that process for me. Um, for me, the transition from YouTube to wavy merch was yeah. basically the big transition. So all the hours I put on YouTube, I still haven't been paid accordingly for the hours, right? But when I made when wavy merch came about, yeah. that's when I started getting paid for the work that I put in for years. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I started making wavy merch money, I'm like. If I'm doing this, and I've already built this, and Wavy Merch is doing this, yeah. I don't necessarily need to do YouTube anymore. Because there's a time where YouTube was my only source of income. And yeah. if I'm not making YouTube videos, but I'm not paying rent next month. Yeah. You know, so I was on that grind. So now that I have this, I don't necessarily need to go through the YouTube stress of uh, an up and down. Like, yeah. wow, I'm booming up, and then boom, I fall down. Yeah. You know, so the mental, it made me want to step away. So it's yeah. so when the Wavy Merch started doing good. I started to save a lot of money. And that whole process of learning how to, manage money from yeah. a business point of view was i would say a challenge you know i've learned a lot yeah. you know money management inventory management um it just got to a point where i didn't need youtube anymore exactly yeah pretty much I man i've been through that I'm, as we all grow right yeah. money i think money management and learning how to save money and learning how where to put the money for it to grow that takes like you have to learn the hard way, yeah, bro. It's, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like it, I feel like you honestly do have to learn the hard way. Yeah. And I think when people talk about you know learning or why is anyone teaching us, mm -hmm. we could teach. My mom was telling me to save money from time. <laughs> you know, but I mean, obviously, saving money is just the first step, and it's like the I guess the solid step. Right. But I, I wasn't really saving money like that. Mm -hmm. But like you gotta learn. You have to learn. I, I'm not. If I was into school, right? If I was in the school and they're talking about you know financial literacy. I might get an A, but doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to apply that to my real life. <laughs> I got A's in plenty of tests, but I never yeah, applied it to my real life. Yeah. There's plenty of things you got to learn and grow. Of course. And there's, there's two people out there. You know, there's people, there's wise people who learn from mistakes of others. Mm -hmm. There's people who are like, all right, see how my parents are doing. They messed up, and I'm able to learn from their mistakes. Right. And there's the people who won't, you know, listen to their parents' mistakes and go like. I got to learn the hard yeah, way. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, it's not going to be me, but. Yeah. 
I'm gonna still mess up and I'm gonna learn how to save and I'll be better for what my money management yeah, later on. Right. And I think that's a lot. Of, a lot of times people don't understand of it. But, but you learning, you learning in a, I guess a different stage in your life because you got rent to pay. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. Products to buy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sell. It was, it was, it was um, a challenge. Like I moved out. I've been living on my own for five years. So yeah. I was, I think I was 22 when I moved out. Yeah. So when I moved out, I made sure before I moved out, I had bread saved because let's say there's an up and down drought again. Yeah. I have money ready to pay this rent that can I can last through a drought and then go back and boom again. So that kind of taught me the basis of money management. And then Wavy Merch did good. So I, how it happened was when I had my brushes, I showed everybody all the brushes. They're like, oh, yo, you're crazy. I can't believe you, you bought all those brushes. Yeah. You know, and then I sold them all, you know, and then I have all this bread. So what I did was I invested more into products. But instead of buying new brushes, I bought Durags. Mm-hmm. And I, I manufactured do and I manufactured combs. So at the time, my business was booming for the brushes. Like, people wanted brushes. So yeah. for me to manufacture a product and create a product and test a product, it takes months. You know, so my company has this hype, but I have no inventory, but I have this bread. Yeah. You know, so I spent all that bread in, in creating new products that were not hyped like the brushes. You yeah. know, so <laughs> now I have no bread and I'm waiting for these, these new products to come in. So I'm like, damn. So the products come in and then it holds me off and I'm doing more brush manufacturing now. And then I spend all my bread again yeah. and I'm waiting yeah. and then it comes again and then it blows up like it's up and down, yeah. bro. It's a journey, but the journey teaches yeah. me a lot. You know, so you, you are now better at in terms of inventory. hundred percent. My inventory is under control. My finance is under control. But if you, if you get hit with money, like yeah. you get hit, blessed with money one time, yeah. I was smart enough to understand that and dumb too. Yeah. But at the same time, I understood that I had to, keep inventory, you know, available for purchase because no one's buying anything. I'm not making any money, you know. So, bro, I got I bought my first car when I launched my company because I needed to, you know, deliver orders. Then the company did good. Then six months later, I'm buying a next car, you know, which was which is dumb. You know, like, I look back now, I'm like, yo, that was dumb. Like, I could have kept my first, my first car was nice, yeah. you know. And then I'm like, nah, 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 I got I to upgrade. I got to upgrade. I upgraded it. And then I'm buying new inventory. And then, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, everything was crazy. Yeah. I was living fast. Yeah. Like, it was fast, but it was crazy. But you got it. You got got it all together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God bless. I got that yeah. together, bro. So, <laughs> so at the time, we were like, well, um, a lot of the times I speak to uh, you know, fellow people across from me, and we speak on like you know, careers and getting that and getting to our what do we want to do, our purpose. You know, as AMS says, it. I'm not, I'm not right. into, I'm not into the the red pill, but yeah. you know, a lot of people <laughs> I do communicate what red yeah. pill is and how that kind of. That's a thing, bro. Yeah. I mean, are, thing. Would you consider yourself red pill? Would you? Would you? Uh, I would say that, yeah, I would say yeah. so. I would say so. Right, so that's going to lead into like different so. things when I, when I bring up certain other things about life. Right. So you, let's talk, let's just end it off by, not say end it off, but like you, um, Wave Merch is doing well and then you transition into building or creating a barbershop. Right. So what was the process of getting there? How, how did you? Um, it was something that was relatable to Wavy Merch. So I can cut hair myself too. I'm not a barber. I can cut hair. But that was the I point. Guess great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I be fucking with him. Yeah, man. you know, you know, you know, you know. Shout out to Apollo P, bro. Shout out to this guy. <laughs> but yeah, there's a point where um after I went through those financial um learnings, yeah. you know, I said, okay, yo, I'm gonna save my bread. So when I had my my white and black diamond brushes and I had the do-rags and stuff, I made a lot of money yeah. and I saved it all. Like I wasn't even inventing or manufacturing new products, so I had bread. And I'm like, and I had a car at the time. So my car actually plays a, a big factor in the barbershop. Yeah. So there's a point where I was supposed to team up with my boy and we're supposed to open up a barbershop, but it didn't work out. So it got to a stage where I'm like, okay, you know what? I need to do this. I want to branch off of off of online, you know? So at the time I want to get the barbershop, but I also have house that I have to pay for it, mm-hmm. and I have a car that I have to pay for it. And I was spending two bands a month easy on my car, on everything. Yeah. And that's an expense that really prevented me from taking a leap to open up another business. If I have house, car, and another business, yeah, yeah that's crazy. Like, that's that's going to take a toll on me. So when I crash my car, I'm like, I can buy a new car right now or I can open up a barbershop. Yeah. You know, and this was in September of last year. And I said, look, if I get the barbershop, I'm going to have to dedicate money to maintaining this, to maintaining Wavy Merch, and I'm going to have to downgrade my whip. So I had a sick car. Yeah. And then I'm driving now a 2002 Honda Civic, bro. You know, so <laughs> and it's been a, it's been a year I've been driving that yeah. a year. So I told myself, look, if I make this decision, I'm gonna be 2020 is a write off. Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna be grinding all year. I'm gonna keep my head down and I'm gonna build. And then I got the barbershop, and yeah, 
So it's wavy cuts. You need yeah. a haircut. Wavy cuts. Hey, wavy cuts. Where, yeah. And where is that located? That's 1269 Dundas Street West, okay. downtown Toronto. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, it's hard to have a business downtown. Right? Anywhere, 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 anywhere. It's hard. Anywhere, yeah. anywhere. That's yeah. well, I'm saying yeah. Toronto. Toronto, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. But like, I, how well has business been doing for you in terms of? It's like, good. Yeah. Surprisingly, after COVID. Uh, wavy merch just blew up. I guess everyone wanted to get waves at that time. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the barbershop was shut down because it wasn't essential. So by the time I finished constructing the place oh, yeah. and I got my licenses and everything, COVID. Yeah. You know, so that was something I didn't prepare for at all. Yeah. You know, but luckily I was able to work with my landlord and the city has also been uh, doing the best that they can to help small businesses like myself yeah. survive. And yeah, I'm good. I'm happy, man. I'm, I can't complain, yeah. man. Can't See, complain. And also, this is like, uh, honestly, one of those type of situations that no one could really predict. Yeah. Like, this is like, I don't even think insurance is a part of this, but like, viral insurance. Mm, yeah, no one was ready for this, yeah. bro. So that made me feel better knowing that, it didn't make me feel better, yeah. but it made me more understanding of the fact that every business is going through this right yeah. now. It's not just me. Yeah. And that made me sleep better at night. And this is probably a great time for businesses who are just like, small businesses just like you, because, and, or people who are, are close to starting a business right now. Mm -hmm. They're going to plan out contingencies to the utmost now. Of course. Yeah, this of makes course. you it makes you more uh, abil uh, able to adapt now. Yeah, you, know you have what to mean? prepare now. Yeah, exactly. No one expected COVID. Yeah. I didn't expect COVID. I don't think anybody did. Exactly. So now you have to pre prepare for that moving forward. All right, so right in front of me, I got Nick Wavy, right? <laughs> one of the biggest YouTubers. One of the biggest Wave YouTubers. Yeah. Yo, know. put me down as just one of the biggest YouTubers, too. I'm from this city, I, I, bro. I'm I, representing yeah. Toronto, I, I, bro. Yeah, I'm at yeah, 265K. Yeah. I don't even yeah. do it no more, yeah. bro. I put my hours in, Apollo P. Yeah. I put my hours in, Apollo P. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Nick Wave, one of the biggest YouTubers, man. <laughs> biggest YouTuber, and I'm not putting uh, no type of country on it. One of the biggest YouTubers. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, bro. That's All what right. it is, man. So, well, pop, like I said, one of the biggest YouTubers, popular. He got diamonds in his ear. I, I just had a diamond tester, yo. I do have a diamond tester. Oh, oh, oh fuck. That would be cool content. They're real, bro. They're oh, real. Unless the man is finessing me at the shop, yeah. bro, they're real. Oh, I, I have a diamond tester, too. I, oh, shit. I had a... Um, all right, but like, but, but after earrings. Yeah. All right, you were popular. Popular. I'm pretty sure now... This goes into like how your career affects your real life. Right. So popularity, I know a lot of people are trying to reach out to you, going like, "Yo, what, Nick Wavy? Yo, let me try to get inside your inner circle and fuck with you, type of thing." Mm -hmm. So during the, your height of your career on YouTube, in terms of your face being uh, recognizable, did you? How was it in terms of like other people? Did you trust like people are coming around you? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say I'm I'm a trusting person. Like yeah. you can even say naive. Yeah. You know, but. That's just the, that's because of my mom, bro. My mom is a softy, you know, so she <laughs> she put that on me. So yeah. I, I'll trust people, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, I also understand that I could just pick up a vibe. Like if I know and I sense you're not genuine, like that's, the, I think that's easy to sense. Bro. I, guess, I, guess that's, so. That's so I guess you weren't too more pa paranoid like most people would be. Nah, 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 okay. nah. Because I understand like people, they want to learn, yeah. you know, like I've done things that people want to do now, yeah. you know, so they can definitely pick my brain. But there's never really been people that try to force their way into my circle. Yeah. But they'll just ask me straight up, like, yo, like, can you help me with this? Can you give me some advice? And I'm fine. With, I'm yeah. fine doing oh, that. Oh, so you don't. OK, that's that's really cool, because a lot of other people I've been uh, talking to, they kind of feel like either they don't have those type of people in their circle yeah. or they are kind of paranoid that people want to use them for mm -hmm. their clout, money. And other uh, sorry, but you can say that it's pretty the opposite for you. Yeah, in terms yeah, of like yeah. no one really trying to do you bad. No one trying to like. Take I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. That's pretty good though. Uh, yeah, that's actually yeah. that's a good. Yeah, and, I I actually, good. and it shows a little. Do it shows a little. Uh, I guess a spectrum. Yeah. That you know when, when you get to some type of popularity and people recognize you, it's not necessarily all bad vibes. And, no, 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 not necessarily no. all bad vibes, but. Yeah. You don't necessarily go out into the world as if someone you're, you're a victim and someone's trying to take advantage of you. Nah, nah, nah. You are only a victim if you let yourself be a victim, you exactly. know? So if you carry yourself with respect and people know they can't even yeah. try any funny shit, yeah. you're, you're good. There we go. Yeah, All right. You're good. You're good. So and do you have, did you have any friends or, you know, people of association with you that was like, yo, Nick, I see you, you know, you get into the bag, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, what's, what's 250 to me, bro? That, that, <laughs> to be honest, nah. Nah. Nah, oh. nah, nah. I had one... Yeah. Um, friend that we had like a, I don't want to get into it but yeah. we had like a big altercation that was probably the one yeah. instance where if someone thought that I was you yeah. know they yeah. could take a advantage of me okay. you know that was only one time yeah. other than that I don't think so so I know that most not to say most but a lot of people who were inside some type of um you know financial gain in life for prosperity mm -hmm. they tend to see like some people around them are, are you ever watch uh Peyton Full? yeah remember how Kevin was going to you know Ace is it Ace this I is think. a movie with um Cameron in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Kevin, Kevin was the dude's sister's drug dealing boyfriend. Okay. And she was like, "Yo, 
Kevin, Kevin was like the ace or AD or I was like, yo, bro, I know you got it, bro. And or like, was he like, I'm broke, baby? No, 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 that no. That was Mitch. Mitch was oh, saying, okay, I'm broke, okay, baby. okay, okay. But like, okay. it's 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 same to te- even Mitch had the same thing with uh, I guess his cousin, mm-hmm. and his cousin kept on saying, yo, let me get some money, bro. Yeah. Like I know you up. Yeah. And it, it, and also there's like a big thing is like when another man starts to count how many how much money you got in your pockets, it's yeah. sometimes some type of jealousy. Of course. You know, even friends can be jealous at you at times. Well, people you consider friends can be jealous at you at times. Yeah. You never had like a situation was like, or I guess. That one situation you talked about, no one was like, "Yo, bro, you got it. Let me just hold." Like, not a like, rap. not like. I don't think like that. Yeah. No, nah, I don't. My friends never really asked me for money because yeah. a lot of my friends I've known them for like yeah. fifteen years, you mm-hmm. know. So that I grew up with them, and they haven't, you know, changed up. Yeah. Nah, I wouldn't say so. I've never okay. been in that. Like that's a blessing, yeah. you know, and that's a good feeling. I would hate to have to go through that. Yeah. No one's ever really asked me for money. Oh wow! Nah, nah, nah. nah Damn. Nah, nah, nah. I'm broke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm broke, baby. They know, they know. I'm yeah. broke, bro. Yeah. All this, this, yeah, is, this, this broke, is a show, bro. show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm returning this tomorrow. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, all right, all right. So, no, be, being on your purpose, you attract a lot of women now, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how you transition. <laughs> just like that, huh? yeah. just like that. You transition, Shit. right? So there's two type of women out there. I'm not gonna say. All right, I don't want to say there's two type of women, but we're gonna break it down into two type of women. Right. There's a type of women who like you for your status and, and your clout, and there's a type of women who like you for your ambition and being on your purpose. Yeah. You have clout. Yes, you're on your purpose. You're on your ambition and stuff like that. But also being YouTube famous. As well as you know, having multiple businesses, I'm pretty sure girls see you for your clout and go like, "Hey, hey, daddy, let me just oh, pot, 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 yeah, pot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pot. We know, we know, we know, <laughs> we know, we know, we know, we know, we know. It's <laughs> not gonna sit well, man. It's not gonna sit well. <laughs> pause, yeah, yeah, we pause that. We yeah, pause they be that. like, "Yo, yeah, hey, hey, Nick, you know, yeah. let me just you know, uh, take me out, or type of thing." Well, not to say take me out, but like they try to get what you get in good favor, and then um, to be honest, I think it's more so. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever really been in a situation like that with women. I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'm naive, bro. Yeah. So I don't know. But I've never had a girl come at me directly like that. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, I know girls. I know how their mind works. And I know how my mind works. Yeah. I know what girls want. They want a man that's, like you said, on his purpose, that, you know, has power, that's respected, mm-hmm. you know, that they can feel comfortable with, that can protect them, mm-hmm. that can make them feel just like a woman, you yeah. know? <clears throat> and... I feel like I take pride in doing those things. You know, just I grind. I don't grind for girls. Yeah. I grind because that's just who I am. So I don't know. I just, I don't know, man. Yeah, you know I, mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. So, so myself, when I focus, you know, I lock all the way in, right? Yeah. And, I, you know, I get focused and I, I start to do stuff like that. And uh, I see my time right now as I'm at my age right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, women are not too much of an interest for me. That's and good. It, yeah, but it's like. All right, Nick Wavy has. That's good. That's good. All right, Nick might be telling me, nah, Nick, Nick, you wild. (laughs) Nah, 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 you right, bro. But like, not to say they're not. It's not an interest because at times I'll just be around them. And I was talking to my other homie Beach Boy, and he was like, Mm. he said like, yo, there's could be a girl inside this hotel, butt ass naked, Mm. and he might not even try to get the pussy. Right. And I was like, facts, because that's how I feel sometimes when I'm around (laughs) friends. Facts. Yeah. Because I'll be like, let me just give you a personal story. I I was with one. I was with a bunch of Mm shorties. You're gallus. No, no, come on. <laughs> no, mm. no, no, no. I was with a bunch of shorties in term, just during my stage, right? And at times when I'd be around them, I just want to be like, just, I just want to pick their brain and just see yeah. where they're at mentally, you know? And I I wouldn't even touch them. I would be like, at the end of it, you know, might give them a handshake, give them a hug. <laughs> and, you know, I've been, but the thing at times, girls been hit me back and like, you don't have mm-hmm. to touchy feely. Like, yeah. you, you don't, you're not affectionate. And I'd be like, yeah, just not my interest yeah. right now. I just right. my interest is like you know f- fulfilling my purpose. Yo, know? that catches girls off guard, bro. Yeah. Because girls are used to guys mm. thirsting over them. Like exactly, I want you, girl. I'm gonna yeah. do. I'm gonna drop a bag on you. I'm mm. gonna be all over you. They're used to that. So yeah. when they get hit with someone that's like, I'm not really you know interested in you like yeah. that. It drives them crazy, and then they're gonna yeah. hit you back. And then they're yeah. gonna, you're gonna start talking to well, her and might then drop you like a bad habit. Yeah, yeah. one or the other, you know, one or, one or the other, you <laughs> know. But drop like a bad habit. <laughs> Yo, there's a lot. It of happens. No, it happens. It happens. Yeah. It happens. You know. But at the same time, 
that's not what girls are used to. They're yeah. used to getting chased like crazy. So when you yeah. don't even want to chase, yeah. it catches them off guard. And then so, I, it's, all right, so let's talk about you, man. Like in terms of you, always obviously building up your platform and building up your business and being mm-hmm. who you are. Uh, how do you deal with women? <laughs> that's, a, that, 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 that's a good question yeah. That's a good question In terms of like Just how I deal with them Or yeah, like yeah, yeah, Deal with them In terms of Yeah Dating Girls are like, and stuff like that. I'm, a, I'm I can Girls can be the death of you yeah. You know like and Maybe for me too I don't know But girls are like They can be very distracting But at the same yeah. time I love girls You yeah. know like I love being around A woman Like yeah. I love fe- Feminine energy I yeah. love sexy girls mm-hmm. You know But at the same time you know, you have to kind of, like, don't lose your mind. You yeah. know, you can lose your mind over a woman and then you're mm-hmm. done. You know, and then you got to build yourself back up from the bottom. Exactly. You know, you have to keep yourself focused, you know, and she wants you because you're focused, yeah. you know, so don't don't lose yeah. that focus. Yeah, you, you, the reason why you attracted her is because you're on your purpose. Exactly, yeah. you know, don't, so. Don't waver yourself. Yeah, 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 her. that'll throw off the dynamics of everything. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, so I have to say this, right? I'm, I'm on Hinge. Have you ever been on this app nah, before? Nah, nah. I don't do the apps, bro. I, I, I get it, because, you know, you, you nick wait. No, no, right? no, no. I, just, I don't know, I just can't do it. Like, I don't know. I, I did it when I was young. Yeah. Like I tried to see if it worked I would never get any matches So I'm like yeah. Oh forget this bro I got on the app late in life Right So right. I was on When I was moving around Canada Earlier this year My man told me Yo get the Tinder That's mm-hmm. for traveling man Right And so I was getting in Tinder You know I was seeing how it worked And then you know After COVID hit I got on Hinge mm-hmm. And I'm like Why am I on this So I what? Get, what's Hinge Hinge is like the same thing As Tinder but like it's people are looking for love on there. So girls look for guys on is that is that what hinge is? No, I think that's Bumble. 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 Okay. Okay. The, I so, you know, I haven't gone to Bumble yet because I feel okay. like you know, once I go Bumble, I'm a dating bat. I'm dating that man, yeah, and yeah. I don't want to be a dating that man <laughs> in my mind. Some people might look at this nigga. You already on two out of three. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're dating bat. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. I'm not on Tinder no more like that. But I'm on hinge. But the only reason I say that is like I tell my friends at times. I'm like, yo, bro. I'm on here and I'm just I might be meeting up with girls and I'm not doing nothing. I think I might be wasting their time mm-hmm. in terms of just and I like to be around women. It's like, I like the femininity and energy. Yeah. You know, I like to just pick their brain. I like to you know just satisfaction. Of course, you know course, I might not, I might not be even smashing. Yeah. You know, just being around girls yeah. are nice. I might be around you. I might not even give you a hug. Like yeah. You know, what I mean? you're but, a sicko, man. That's <laughs> like, you got you probably got these girls mad, bro. I do. I do. You got these girls I bent. Do. I do. I had one girl like, <laughs> hit me in the text one time and she was like, yo. I don't want to do anything with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever situation I would be with you, I'd be upset. Oh, yeah. damn, bro. Yeah, because I wasn't, I wasn't thirsting after her. The right, right, she right, was right, saying. right, was like, right. Oh. She was like, because she hit my line. She was like, oh, I'm talking to this other guy. And I'm like, all right. Well, it was like, but you don't, you don't do what he does. You don't, you know, tell me you, you I'm attracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, we heard all that yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm, how it goes, I'm, bro. Back, I'm, I'm back in my mind, like, fuck you for talking to me. Then. Yeah, <laughs> you're giving you everything you want because <laughs> you're who she wants, bro. Yeah. Because you're not giving her. What yeah. the other guy's giving her. So yeah. now she, she's tripping. Yeah, she, and she dropped me so, but yeah. If you wanted it, you could have said, okay, fine, let's do it. And she would be, she would be down. To be honest, if I, if I wanted it, if I, I would have to bend myself. Right, her, right, right, her, right. Yeah, you don't need to yeah, bend. Yeah. You just got to do a little, like, a little. I wasn't going to do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, so how do you look at relationships now? As a, someone who's really, like, you don't, you don't, because here's the thing. A real man. If a girl gets with a real man, mm-hmm. she has to assist what he's doing because the real man's already putting his Mac down. Right. You already put your Mac down. Right. So when she, so how do you look at relationships? I had a girl tell me one time, she's like, what's your love language? Mm. I'm like, what? I have no idea what that is. She's like, what are the things that a girl would do that, you know, makes you tick? I'm like, I, I can't remember what I answered. So she gave me these options. I can't remember what the five were, but yeah. one of the options were like physical, like yeah. the physical touch that you guys can have, and acts of service. Yeah. And then acts of service, what she explained it to me was like acts of service is someone who can do something for you that makes you feel loved. So like cooking for me, cleaning for me, mm-hmm. helping me with my business. And I'm like, yo, that and the physical touch. She said I have to pick two. So yeah. I picked those two. And then that made me realize, oh, I already knew from time, but there's a lot that I go through in my day, mm-hmm. right? This is a lot. We can get into this right <laughs> now. If you want to get into this, Apollo P, bro. I, get, you know, I, I used to have a mentality where yeah. I'm like, this may make girls, like, it might make them go crazy yeah. or it might make them mad. I don't yeah. know. But there was a time where I felt like, yo, girl, we got to go 50 50. Yo, I'm paying rent. Yo, you want to move in? 50 50. You oh, want to move right now? That's you. But hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Everything 50 50. And that was my mentality back then. Mm. Until I, you know, I, I thought about things for a bit. And I got older. I'm like, yo, if I'm not grinding, mm. I'm not being myself. If I'm not getting money, I'm not being myself. And if I'm not being myself, I can't be in a relationship. Yeah. So I hold myself down. I pay my bills. I pay my rent. I cook. I clean. I do everything myself. And I get money. Mm. So for a girl to come into my life, she has to do things that 
make my life easier, which would be the things I don't want to do, cook, clean, do all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, me doing everything now, getting money and handling the house, I realize that that's a job as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I want my girl to be taking care of my kids, to be taking care of the house, to be taking care of me, that's a job in itself. So you do your job. I'm going to get the money. I'm going to do my job and we can make that work and we'll be happy. Exactly. You know, and I had to get to that stage of, you know, recognizing who I am as a man and how I'm going to be moving forward. Yeah. And then that's, that kind of made me realize I'm, I'm getting grown, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm old, man. Yeah. I'm I, old. I, so you said 50, 50, my man, my, my man, my man, my homie out in LA, I told him that's how I am. 50, 50. Yeah. He was like, man, you, you, are, you a demon. <laughs> and I was like, bro, I was telling, cause I was telling him, I was telling him, me, this is my, my Terrell T. I yeah. tell him all the time, like, yo, I'm, I'm, just, I'm doing a whole bunch of shit. I'm telling I'm, I keep on telling him, I'm with girls. I'm, I'm wasting their time. Yeah, well, in yeah. terms of like just not being physical or not even showing the type of interest, right. and I'm not doing it on purpose. I like, guess mentally, I think I'm just you're not there right I'll now. For, yeah, yeah so. and I'm telling them, I'm, I'm giving these chicks. If I do, I'm giving these chicks about five minutes of pipe. And my man's yeah. like, yo, bro, you can't be doing that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, nigga, fuck the group chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. fuck the group chat. Yeah. <laughs> Girls talking bad about me. Fuck the group chat. Yeah. <laughs> My man, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing all of this, that. I'm like, I'm telling yo, we going 50 50 on the meals. Right. He's like, bro, like, you just a wild guy, bro. You're a sicko, bro. Yeah, and I'm like, You're a beast. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> and at the time, I asked him, I was like, yo, going on vacation. Right. You pay like 50 50 for like going on vacation? Because there was like a, there was like popular on the internet how girls yeah. were trying to pay 50 50 for vacation. And I told him, bro, 50 50 on vacation. He was like, bro. He got some money. He's American. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nah, I paid for my girls' ba vacations oh, before. Oh, okay. Yeah, bro. You're not to that financial level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be, you know, I don't know, but like, I don't know. I'm just taking my girl on vacation, bro. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I mean, you know, but the thing is, I'll tell, I, I might be, this, I might sound crazy hmm. when I say a lot of the things I do just because I'm in the state I am right now. But I told myself and I know myself enough where someone enters my life that hmm. I deem valuable. Right. Then the, the the sky's the limit. Of course, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. And then when you when you get to that stage, then you don't have, you don't worry about nothing, bro. Exactly, you don't worry about nothing. All right, so like everything everything that you've done so far in your life, you know, like everything has affected you in a particular type of way. You being on YouTube, the ups and downs. You starting a business, the ups and downs. Barbershops, the ups and downs. Right. Friends, ups and downs. Relationships. You seem like be uh, hitting well in the. No, 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 yo. There's ups and downs. There's ups and downs, bro. There's up, don't get it twisted, bro. There's, there's ups and downs, bro. There's ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's ups and downs, bro. There's, there's ups and downs, bro. I'm not even gonna cap yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so ev everything is ups and down. We're in a society right now where we ask people about, you know, their mental state and mental health and stuff like that. So, where w where would you say your mental state is at right now? It's that's a good question yeah. because recently I came to the realization that I was depressed. Mm. You know, so for all 2019, I feel like I was anything I would do, I wouldn't enjoy it. You know, and then. Earlier this year, a lot of things I would do, I still wouldn't enjoy. And I just had, like, a dark cloud around me. Like, my energy was bad. I'm just real negative, you know? And it took, I deleted my Instagram. Like, I was gone for two months, yeah. and I just went ghost. And, you know, what I told myself was, I feel like in today's society, we all have demons, and we all have problems that are chasing us, and we just got to keep going. That's the mentality that they tell us, yo, keep yeah. going, run from it, you know, just keep moving. Yeah. What I did was I said, look, I'm not running from this because I'm going to run, then something's going to hurt me. While I'm running, I'm going to stop, and then I got a big cloud that's following me that's going to hit me, and I got to run again. Yeah. And I said, look, I'm going to stop running, and I'm going to take a step back, mm -hmm. and I'm going to actually go into my depressed state. Like, I was depressed, bro. Like, I wasn't going out. I had no Instagram. I had no social life. I, was, mm -hmm. I started working construction. No, fuck, I, what? And th trust me, bro. Like, it was hot. <laughs> like, it's hot. And I was working construction, but yeah. I started working at my boy's mechanic shop. Yeah. I started doing construction, and... Working in that heat outside doing labor taught me a lot. And that put my brain through a lot and it put my emotions through a lot and made me grow as a man and my character grew. Yeah. But me stepping back and not trying to run anymore, I felt everything I had to feel. Mm -hmm. Everything that I was running from, everything that was hurting me, I let it hurt me. Like, I let it kill me, you know, mm -hmm. it killed me. But it got to a point where it didn't kill me anymore. You know, I'm like, wow, like last week I was bummy. But this week, yo, I kind of feel a bit better. And that just, that growth right there from one week, it showed me like, okay, what if I keep, what if I stay in my depression? What if I feel everything and go through all the bad I have to go through? And I did that. And then I came back to Instagram like a month ago. And when I came back, I was nervous. I was talking to my boy. I'm like, yo, bro, I don't know if I'm ready to come back on IG. Like, this is a big move. I've been gone. He's like, yo, just do it. And I did it. And then 
I put up a picture and I got so much love and I'm like, yo, I feel like I'm, this was the right time to come back. And I, I came back to the world, you know, I'm back on Instagram. I'm still, um, protecting my energy pretty much. Like I don't be posting like how I used to post. I'm real quiet and, you know, I'm just doing my thing in the background, but I would say right now going through the depression, mm -hmm. it brought me to a state right now where I can actually say I'm happy. Like okay. I wake up and I can say, yo, what am I going to do today? And I can't wait, you know, and I'm going to go to bed. And I'm going to go to sleep good. And I'm going to wake up the next day and I'm going to be happy again. There you go. So I'm just enjoying everything that comes my way right now. And it's a good feeling. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Honestly. I like that. Thank you, bro. That, thank you. Yeah, thank I you. like that. Thank you. you. Know, thank I you. feel like that a lot. Those are some questions that we don't really don't ask. Yeah. And we, we might mask it because, you know, the laughs and the stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm glad that you like mentally you feel better. Nah, for sure. Like for that. sure. And consistently it's like, uh, it's like, a, it's an ongoing battle in terms yeah. of just, you know, like you said, protecting your energy yeah. and, and actually dealing with stuff. Because think about it. Um, a lot of people don't deal with their stuff. They exactly. Run, they I run, know. They yeah. run forever. Yeah. And you can't do yeah. that, bro. Life's not going to be, you got to just face it. It's going to be hard yeah. times when you face it. Bro, I wasn't going outside. My friends would see me like, yo, you're so sad. And I just, I chose to just go ghost because I'm a positive person. I always have a good energy yeah. and people expect me to have a good energy. Mm -hmm. So if I'm actually feeling bad, I can come outside, put on my happy face, and I get back into my car driving home, boom, take it off, and I'm feeling messed up, you know? And that transition, that up and down, yeah. bro, there's enough up and downs in my life, you know? So I just stayed down, and I said, let me feel that, yeah. and then let me go back up. Let me, let me ask you a question. Are you, would you consider yourself the strong friend amongst your friend group? Strong what? Mentally, emotionally? The strong friend, that people look at you to be the strong, the strong friend. Yeah. yeah and people don't so, necessarily yeah. check up on you, but you kind of yeah, check up on other people. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You, know, you kind of check up on other people and they're yeah. like, oh, thank you, bro. Like, but like, people don't necessarily check up on you in that way and you kind of like got to deal with your demons. Yeah. Like, but like, I feel like people do check on me because yeah. I feel like the people that are in my life, they actually care about me. I say they're yeah. genuine, you know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'll say, nah, I'm good. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. When in reality, nah, there's yeah. so much things that I may be embarrassed to even talk to you about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then me even lying and saying I'm good yeah. makes me feel like shit because I had to put on my mask for you. Yeah. And then now I'm going to be by myself. I'm going to yeah. take it off. I'm going to feel, oh, yeah, I that's, actually heard it. So that's considered like you the strong friend, like in a sense, because people look at you so. like you, all the things you've done in your life. You gotta, people gotta look at you and like, yo, bro, he really did that shit. Yeah. Like, people look at you as the inspiration amongst your friend group and even outside. Yeah. So when they come encounter you and ask you for advice or, you know, just want to pick your brain, you, like, you're putting on the thing. You, yeah. you, you are a, a sense of, like, success personified in front of them. Yeah. So it's like, you, that, that must me mentally draining, <laughs> dog. Mentally, bro, I was done. For, like, a year, bro, 2019, yeah. right off, bro. Earlier this year. I was done. Yeah. I couldn't take it no more. I've been doing this a long time, bro. Yeah. Long time I was been. That's the thing. Like people ask me for whatever, and I have to show them. Yeah, yeah, you could do it. I'm so happy. You're yeah. Like, yeah, but no. Man. You know, so yeah, it's hard, man. I I, bro, you. I broke down, bro. It hit oh, me, but I let it break me. I let it break me, though. Yeah, I let man. it. Yeah. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Man. I let it break me, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. So all right, you feel better now and stuff like. I'm good, bro. I'm good. All right, so. Yeah, this has been a good conversation, man. Yeah, good conversation. Give me rolling. All right, man. yeah. So <laughs> I, now that we got over the, the mental health and, and stuff like, and what do you say for? I guess since you talked about bettering yourself and um, and, and most people, I'm not gonna, I don't want to disrespect anyone and say they're not as strong as you. Yeah. But there's other tactics that people could, you know, na navigate into dealing with themselves. Right. Everyone has their own yeah. way of dealing with things. Yeah. yeah. I would say I'm more so like you. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um, and I do let. If I'm doing, I, if I do feel down, mm -hmm. I I sit with that and I let that that pain hit yeah. me. I remember Safari saying something. He said, "I don't drink, I don't smoke, because I want to feel everything I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't let all that other stuff, you know, negate me from my right. feelings and, and put me in a path where I can't feel what I'm feeling. So I kind of like when he said that, I was already on the path where I, I didn't drink because I don't like to taste the alcohol and mm -hmm. then we made me paranoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and er everything else is like I'm not doing that. Right, yeah. of course. So when I t when I heard him say that, I was like, yeah, I, I guess. You know, it's better this way yeah. that I'm I'm sober for my for I'm saying for me. It's better for me to be sober and mm -hmm. kind of deal with it, the day to day stuff that I may go through. I mean, most times I'll just say my my mental is like you know in a good space where I'm able to deal with the the highs and lows of life. You know, because mm -hmm. you know what that what's that Ric Flair saying? You know, Ric Flair. I don't know. I don't. Know. Ooh, yeah, he said, know. Well, he said that on the Dom, at the end of a Dom Kennedy uh, song. Yeah, he's like a real man in life. Uh, a real man's get down. No, fuck. He said. Uh, sometimes in life a man gets hit and he goes down, but a real man doesn't stay down. He stays up. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, That's how it goes, yeah. bro. That's how it goes. Yeah, so you, you get hit. You get... But you don't... Life's going to hit you, bro. Yeah. Life, life is... Yo, we, God willing, we have a long life, yeah. man. You know, so it's... I'm glad you said that. 
You have a long life. A lot have of a long life. Short. Yeah, you know, I want. I, other people want a short life. Yeah. I want to live a long life. Long you know, life. so yo, there's gonna be it's yeah. a battle, bro. There's gonna be ups and downs. Bro. When people say I'm old, cause I, I turned 28 this year. Okay, yeah. I'm turning 27, bro. You got a year on me. Yeah, man. Yeah. So uh, people say I'm old. Yeah. You know, people under 25 say I'm old. But uh, <laughs> you kind of are like, yo, bro, you're older than me, and I think I'm old now. I'm turning 27. Yo, yeah. you're already 28, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Stuff, you know, yeah, but yeah, hey, the good life. thing about life is that there's older people than me, so I can of feel course, young. of course. So, and the thing is, there's this guy like I like to watch on YouTube, his name's Star, and um, he's like he's 50 something years old, mm -hmm. and he was like, It's a blessing the way they get the way that the age that I got today because growing up, niggas was getting smoked like Lucy's, you know, people, people getting you know, die off, yeah, you know. And some of them don't have the privilege to live up to like fifty something. Yeah, yeah. So like every time I'm like, yeah, I'm a year older. It's a privilege because mm -hmm. after I graduated high school, even when I was in, in high school, I seen my first year in high school someone passed away. Yeah, you know, second year in high school someone passed away. You know what I mean? After I graduated high school, someone passed away. You know, two years after I graduated high school, people passed away. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? I'm like, damn, I went to high school with this dude. I had some no, type of scary, rapport bro. with this girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Scary. Damn, and I'm like, oh shit, she. I'm seeing, and I see all this stuff, and I'm like, yo, it's a privilege. I might be young, you know. I'm a young and old depends who you ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like, I'm saying, like, it's a privilege to be the age I'm at, the way I, and navigate through life of the course, way that man. I did. Yo, you know, life is honestly is life is crazy. Yeah. But just being here, I, I enjoy being here. Exactly. I hope you enjoy being here too, bro. And we should all enjoy exactly. being here because life is beautiful and there's going to be ups yeah. and there's going to be downs, bro. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. Yeah. So you just got to roll through it, man. Yeah. So all right. Yeah. So now this is, what's your thoughts on life? We got, we got about you, but like, how does, you know, who you are, uh, I guess, give you an opinion on what's going on in the world? I haven't watched, I think... We'll talk, we talk about the racism, about what's going on in the world. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to pin you down to anything specific. Yeah, yeah. Uh, My, I'll, I'll say I haven't watched any of the videos. Okay. Anything that's happened, I can't bring myself to watch it because I know that's going to hurt my stomach, yeah. you know? So I know what's, I have an understanding of what's going on, mm. but I have not watched any of the videos because yeah. it's disgusting. The videos are disgusting yeah. and what's happening is disgusting. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I have not, you know, watched the videos yeah. of anything. Yeah, man. Yeah. I look at it like this, man. A lot of the a lot of the stuff I'm seeing out in the real world in terms of just you know racism, prejudice, and like just nasty, disgusting behavior yeah. that's done to like other people. Uh, I look at it like, okay, yeah, I'm seeing it. It's right. Some of the stuff, it's a lot of the stuff is true, mm -hmm. but it's magnified in a way to where I think is like everything is like that. I remember when the whole uh, George Floyd thing happened, and the internet made me feel like I was a victim. Mm -hmm. So when I would go outside my house, I would have to feel like white people or police are against me. Uh, right. I can say on the record, I haven't really had any type of like crazy run-ins with the police. So my experiences with the police are not the same as most people. Some people right. might say, yo, fuck the 12. Like yeah. I have no, the only things I, I've, I've been, I, but I got a, some people, some people may call it a nigga wake up call, mm -hmm. uh, but I call the, a bedazzling of my wrist. <laughs> it put the, the nice silver bracelets on my wrist, but, yeah. I wasn't no criminal. It was right. um my be me being young, me seventeen, right, 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 right. and I'm uh, going to a house party and start running away, and then you know the cops caught me. Yeah. I was I was the fastest one, so they you know went for you. Yeah, they went for me. You're not that fast if they caught you, bro. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so, so here's a story. So here's a story. Here's a story. Here's a quick story of how I probably got put in the the, the bracelets. Yeah. Uh, I was at the house party. The cops rang in. I was on I was outside because yeah. the house party got locked up. I was on the outside. I was being cops pulled up room. Mm -hmm. I'm running. I got the purple skinny jeans on yeah. with the purple dunks. And I'm, I'm, my shit's is sagging. I'm running fast. And the cops are like, yo, he's the fast one. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hearing dogs barking in the backseat. Oh. And I'm looking. So dogs barking in the backseat. And my next objective is this tall fence. I could hop the fence, but I don't think I could hop the fence as fast as they the could release the dogs. Yeah, on. yeah, 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 yeah. And I got skinny jeans on. Bro, they put the dogs on you, bro. They, they, they did. I was, oh, okay, I was, I was, that's crazy. And then they I, was, did like, that. I looked at, I split second. Yeah. I was like, "Bomb!" I'm on the floor. Like, okay, okay, okay. I'm on okay. the floor yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. They put me put hands. They put time. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, all right. They, they was like, all right. They had a conversation with me. I'm like, and I, yo, also one thing. I'm a strong ass nigga, man. I didn't yeah. break down. I didn't fold. <laughs> I didn't I didn't fold. None of that. Yeah. You know, my friend called me. I was, but I'm taking this nigga. My friend was calling me because uh, he knows a little bit about the like how police officers right. work and questioning. So he was calling me. He was like, the police officer was like, Yo, who's calling you? And he was like, I was, I don't know. And he was like, and they hung up the phone. He mm -hmm. was like, a after I found out, it was like, if someone calls you, you could say that that's your brother or relative. Yeah. And they're able to uh, give you like a great character. Say that that's my people. Like, let him go. He's not. Oh, fat. I didn't know if that. You, oh. if, if you're not doing anything, if you're not being charged or anything, right? Well, probably I got still let go anyways. But just I was underage at mm -hmm. the time. Okay. 
So they ended up, you know, having a conversation with me. It's like midnight. I had the bracelets around my wrist, sitting down, you know, cooling, right. having a nice conversation with me. He was like, "Yo, bro, like you're the fastest one, man." And he was like, "You're about to let, we're about to release the dogs." Yeah. Like, I'm like, "Damn, good thing you did." He yeah. was like, "Yeah, what's up? They, they fucked you up." <laughs> I was like, yeah, that would have been a hell of a story, bro. Yo, the story the would have been lit. Yeah. I, I probably would have had a scar on my arm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So after that, um, yeah, I didn't fall. I wasn't crying or nothing like that. But I just, I, yeah, that's the only time I got the story. Right. Yeah. And even that, I came out of there smiling after that. I'm like, all right, man, that's a cool story. Yeah, so you're good then. Yeah. Yeah. I, but like I, like I say that to say this, I still had, had no running as a cop. Obviously, I'm the fastest. I'm running. I had I had no reason to be running. Yeah. I just had the little young kid uh, mentality of just it's running. Just buggy, bro. Yeah. Just cut. So even with that, even with my running with police officers, I still can't say I had anything bad to wear and have a, a negative perception with them. Mm-hmm. So even with white people, I yeah. think, you know, a lot of white people have done me um, pretty well, I right. would quite say. Uh, Sometimes when I go out, bro, like I'm bigger than a, like yeah. a common person outside. Yeah. Sometimes I have my do-rag on. Sometimes I look like, you know, like I could potentially be I, f- I feel like people could judge me yeah. you know I'm dressed like you could judge me yeah. and I feel sometimes I've been feeling that tension not tension but mm-hmm. like that look you know like they're shook you know so yeah. it, it, I don't know it's just I don't know man maybe I don't got the face for it or maybe I do or maybe I don't bro, look like I have the face to be a goon no 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 way no. bro no. no so they shouldn't be feeling yeah. the type of way when I walk yeah. down the street but yeah as a black man uh also I, w- I want to say as myself as a man I'm a man first and black man second mm-hmm. uh I don't necessarily feel afraid or a fear whenever I leave the building or my my premises or something yeah. like that. I've been to parts of Canada where it's been hella white and I'm mm-hmm. the only black person there. Right. And I didn't feel no I had no fear in my heart about That's you good, know, or any type of prejudice. Not a lot of people can feel the same way, yeah. bro. Hey, That's and th- yeah, and not everyone's built the same. You know, right. we're all caught, we, might, we might not all be cut from the same cloth. Mm-hmm. That's true as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I understand that. I've come to the part mentally and maybe philo- philosophically <laughs> to where. I understand that people are not built the same way, but right, no, that's a fact. That's a fact. But I understand the nature of humans. I would like to say to where it's like, I won't do that. Mm-hmm. Y- you probably will, and I, and depending on how I look at and how I formulate and understand you, mm-hmm. I might just accept that. I'm glad. Yeah. I know that you would. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause what, what's the thing? Forgive me for you don't know what you do? Something like that. Yeah. Something well, I, that's like that. what it is. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> I have the bigger... I understand. That's good. Yeah. Not a lot of people have that mentality, bro. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. So, all right. So, we talked about you for this duration of the time. Uh, career, your ups and downs, where your mental is at, your, your self relationships. Uh, you're killing it, I assume. But <laughs> <laughs> man, killing bro, it. I'm just trying to make it day by day, bro. Yeah. I'm just trying to make it day yeah, by I'm day. That's it. trying to make it. $1.15. I feel you. That's it, bro. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually glad, man. I'm actually glad. Thank and you, bro. This is a great follow-up. Yeah. yeah. And we got to do a next one yeah. two, three years. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what's good, man. Yeah. <laughs> of course, bro. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so uh, for everything that's going on, for people watching this and, and listening, where can they, uh, you know, I just follow, follow you. Follow me. You can hit me up on Instagram, Nick underscore Wavy. Uh, you go on YouTube, type in Nick Wavy. Yeah. Facebook, Nick Wavy. Everything, just Nick Wavy. All right, for people were like, yo, bro, I, I, I'm cutting off the brace today. Yeah. And I'm listening to you. Where can I get the merch? Oh, yo, you got to go to wavymerch.com. They know they got to go to wavymerch.com. Yeah. If you want wave products, yeah. wavymerch.com. That's the spot. Exactly. And yeah. if I'm living in the, the GTA section, I'm seeing I'm like, fucking with Wave, Nick Wavy. Right. And I got the merch, but, you know, my barber might be fucking up my hairline a little bit. Where can I go to cut well, my bro, hair? bro, you know you got to go to Wavy Cuts. That's 1269 Dundas Street West. Okay. Yeah, so we got, what else? What else, bro? What else? Talk to me. What All else, right. man? If people want financial advice. <laughs> go to a bank, bro. Don't come to me, bro. Don't come to me. I'm not an advisor, bro. I'm not an advisor. <laughs> <laughs> but Wavy Bank coming soon, yeah. bro. Who knows? Um, the Wavy Bank's coming soon. <laughs> Wavy, yeah. I need that in my life. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, All right, man. I appreciate the conversation with you, like always. Uh, nothing but the best. You appreciate know. that. Apollo P for the people. Exactly. I appreciate that, hey, bro. Man, this has been another episode of Please Say More. And I got the illustrious guest, Nick Wavy, with me. <laughs> Come back next week. We got someone cooler. Uh, right. Not cooler, but we got someone cooler. Whoa, 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 whoa my <laughs> guy. I, no, yeah, look, I'm going to just step my game up, bro. That's it. <laughs> if there's someone cooler than me, bro, I'm going to step it up. We'll come back in three years. I'm going to be the coolest, bro. Uh, nah, no, no, <laughs> I, lo- I love Nick Wavy, man. All right, man. This has been another episode of Please Say <laughs> More, man, with my nice guest, my illustrious you. guest, Nick Wavy, man. Yes, Make sir. sure you go support this man, the good brother. He got he got merch, he got a YouTube channel, he got a business, all right? All right. All right, and uh, Paulo P, we signing out. Appreciate that. See you.